Hi, this is a quick video from eCorp Maths to give some tips on your preparation and revision for your upcoming GCSE Maths exam. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about preparation and revision, then I'm going to answer some of your common questions that I'm getting for YouTube, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the on-scene topic papers that I'll be releasing after the exams happen, so the day after the exams happen, I get to see the paper, and then look at the on-scene topics, and I make some papers and resources for those. So first of all, let's set up a preparation. Obviously, the exams are coming up. Um, it may be that you're watching this video right away, and that means you've got about near, just under three weeks to prepare. It might be you're watching it a bit later, and you've got sort of one to two weeks to prepare. Um, so so I'm going to give some tips on preparation. First of all, let's know when and where your exam is. Your school sheet will be in your slip of paper, and on that slip of paper, I'll have a list of all your exams, the location, your seat number. So make sure you've got that. I usually get a calendar and jot those out whenever I'm doing exams, so I know when they are. And also means you can help prepare for those exams, because sometimes you might have some time in between the exams. Sometimes you might have two exams in one day. So again, it's just useful to help you plan that out. Next, equipment. First of all, make sure you've got all your equipment. So in terms of equipment, you probably have this already together for your mock exams and all those practice papers you've been doing already, but make sure you've got a see through pencil case. Make sure you've got at least two pencils, good HP pencils. Make sure you've got some black ballpoint pens. The black pen shows up, ballpoint shows up better whenever they're scanned, so make sure you've got some of those. I bring two or three just in case one runs out. Bring some rulers. Again, I bring two of everything. You might only need one ruler, but I bring two. Protractors. I tend to use the 360 degree one for bearings questions and the 180 degree ones for everything else, but usually that's fine for most students. Make sure you've got at least one protractor. A compass, a pair of compasses. Make sure you've got that tightened, so if you need to tighten it using a screwdriver, make sure it's tightened so it's not loose and wobbly, but make sure it's the one that you like. Obviously, an eraser, rubber, and sharpener. In terms of calculators, again, I tend to bring two just in case the battery runs out of runs out in one. I'm just realizing they're both solar panels, so just in case the lights are too dim for one calculator and not the other. But make sure you've got a scientific calculator ready. Obviously, you've probably been using it for the last couple of years already or last year and you're used to it, but I tend to want to make sure that I'm used to it. So if you are buying a new calculator, make sure you get that soon and have some time practicing using it before you do the exam. Another piece of equipment or another resource which can be quite useful for you in the GCSE maths exam is tracing paper. It's not something that you'd bring in yourself, but it's something that they should have in the hall ready for you so that whenever you get to that rotation question, you need to rotate the shape on the grid 90 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise or 180 degrees, that you can put your hand up and ask for that tracing paper. It might be worthwhile actually just checking with your maths teacher that they're going to have that ready for you. It actually just gives them a bit of time to prepare and get that together. It should be there anyway. So I'm now going to talk about revision. A major part of revision will be past papers, and you hopefully will have done some of these in school already, as well as your mocks, maybe you've got something to bring home to do, and so on. So make sure you're working through those past papers. With those past papers, make sure whenever you're working through them that you try the question, and if you get to one that you're stuck on, don't just leave it out and move on. Make sure you do something about it, whether it's just speaking to a teacher, looking at your revision guides, your corporate maths revision cards, the website. Make sure that you're just not leaving it moving on, because, you know, it's bound to be the question that comes up on the exam. If you leave it out and just move on, that same question will probably appear with just some different numbers. So make sure that if there's something you're stuck on that you go and do something about it. If you're looking for more past papers, there are practice papers on corporate maps. As well as that, there's two other resources which might be really useful. One is the A Bit of Everything paper. And the A Bit of Everything paper has about, I think it's about 100 questions on everything really. And they can be really useful to just go through and practice all the topics. As well as that, there's the challenge papers. And the challenge papers are sort of curveball questions that sort of students usually find quite difficult. And if you've done lots of past papers already and looking for a bit, something a bit different, the challenge papers can be really useful. Okay, so we've talked a bit about past papers. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about revising, so preparing for the exams and recapping topics. So rather than getting a revision guide and turning to page one and just going through the whole way through, considering you've only got two to three weeks to, to go to the exam and you've got other subjects to prepare for, it can be useful to revise strategically. There are revision checklists on corporate maps and those revision checklists have a list of all the topics. And what I'd be saying to students is if you haven't done so already, get a highlighter or a pen and go through and cross out the topics that you're really confident with. That way, and you'll know from doing the past papers, and doing those past papers will give you an idea of that, you can go through and see which topics you need to do some work on. On here, you've got the video numbers, so you can watch a recap, and hopefully that video, along with the resources, will be enough to help you master that topic and to understand it and to be confident in it in terms of going into the exam and thinking, Do you know, I think I can pick up, if not all the marks, some of the marks in that question. If you need a bit of extra help, though, I always recommend going and see your teacher with two to three weeks to go. 
at this time, the, the teachers really want the students to go to them and say, look, sir or miss, can you do some extra work, or missus, can you do some extra work on this, or, you know, can you do some extra work on trigonometry, can you do some extra work on compound interest? And the teachers would always be, I would expect the teachers to be, always be happy to find five, ten minutes to go through something with you, or it might be that they've had other students mention it and the, you know, the whole class may be gone over. So by you going and asking the teacher or asking within class time or before or after the lesson to do some extra work on trigonometry, the teacher might decide to do a bit of a revision lesson on it and you might be helping out everyone else in your class as well. So don't be afraid to go and ask your teacher or ask a relative or friends for some extra support on a particular topic or just go on Cobra Maps and look at the videos and hopefully they'll help also. So try and use your time sensibly and to revise strategically rather than trying to focus on everything, focus on the topics which need a bit of extra attention. So I'm now going to take some of your questions that you've sent me on YouTube and I'm going to answer them the best I can. So the first question, I get this one quite a lot, is it too late to revise? No, it's definitely not too late to revise. You have been doing math since primary school, the whole way through secondary school, and you've probably been doing loads of hard work this year in year 11 preparing for this exam. You will have hopefully have done some mocks, you will have done been doing class tests, your teacher will have hopefully given you some practice papers or practice paper questions to do for homework. That is all a revision. Obviously it might not be what you class as a revision sitting with a, a revision guide studying, but with maths, the best way to revise maths is to practice maths, to do maths. So you will have been doing loads of revision for uh, the year anyway. Use the next couple of weeks sensibly though, so do do the things that I've suggested in this video, get the revision checklist, do some past papers, have a look at the bit of everything paper, do some challenge paper questions, speak to your teacher or a friend or a relative about something, watch the Cobra Mouse videos, do some work, do some five a days, all those things will be useful and will hopefully help you improve. If you do have strengths and weaknesses do, or some weaknesses, areas that need attention, do some work on those, but you have been doing lots of maths already, you, you're not just starting your revision now you've been doing loads of preparation by that final push to so do as much as you can and good luck I hope it goes really well an awful lot is what grade is 50 marks what grade is 60 marks or will the grade boundaries be higher this year or lower this year that's not a question really that I can answer because obviously it will depend on how the students find the paper if the students find the paper really easy then the grade boundaries may be higher if the paper students find the paper really really difficult and challenging the grade boundaries will be a bit lower. Generally, the exam boards are quite good at keeping the, the papers roughly the same level of difficulty. If you want a rough idea of what the grades should be, look at the previous year. So for instance, if you're studying AQA, look at AQA, Google search AQA grade boundaries, and you can go on and you can have a look at the maths boundaries for the last couple of years, and you'll get a rough idea. Now, it will go up and it will go down. It's, it's difficult to, to predict it. What I would generally say to the students is try not to spend too much time and effort now considering grade boundaries. Spend your time doing the revision going through the topics you need to do work on really just trying your best if you try your best that's all you can really do so try not to worry too much about the boundaries and also after the paper is done don't spend too much time thinking oh i got this on paper one try and focus on paper two focus on what's ahead and what you can do something about after you do paper two try not to think of how you've done the previous ones just try and focus on what's coming up and then once you've finished all the papers Try not to think about it at all. Just wait until the exams, the, the results there, and just see how you've got on. But, you know, it's not something that someone can predict. You can look at the previous boundaries on, you know, just use your exam board and grade boundaries and search it. But you focus on the things you can control at this moment in time, and that's how confident you are going into the exam. So the last question I'm going to cover in this video is, what should I do the day of the exam? So a lot of students will ask, but again, contact said they just get a little bit nervous before doing their GCC maths exams. Have I got any tips that might help them out? So the thing I would say is, first of all, the night before, make sure you get a good night's sleep, that you've packed your bag and you're well organized that night before. So make sure you've got all your equipment together. You've got maybe any revision notes or revision cards that you want to bring into school and recap on the way ready so you've got all those packs so you're not sort of getting anxious on the morning getting things ready that you get a good night's sleep so you know obviously do some revision recap things today before and the night before but don't step too late um, i sometimes get emails at one two in the morning and i think to myself no no no, you need to get your sleep the sleep the night before the exam is very important so you feel fresh going in um another thing i would say is get a good breakfast if, if you like a breakfast before the exam or at least eat something i yeah i, I tended to have just sort of um, a bit of weedabix or a, a banana or, you know i used to make sure you was hydrated as well so all those little things will help and um, then obviously going into the into school I tended not to like being around lots of people I like to get into school a bit early finding a quiet place 
and just sort of going through my notes and then going into the exam hall. Some people are the opposite. They like to be around certain friends. So obviously make arrangements and meet them and just sort of maybe talk about your maths as you're going into the exam hall, but try and do the thing that works best for you. And in terms of going in and doing the paper, just remember all you can do is do your best. So that paper in front of you, all you can do, you put in all the hard work, there's the, all you can do is just try your very best in that paper and if you're going to pass and do well, you're fantastic and if not, at least you know you've done your very, very, very best. Okay, so good luck with that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the on-scene topic papers. After paper one takes place, I get to see the paper the next morning and I make a list of topics that have appeared and most importantly, that then tells me the topics that haven't been tested yet. Now, given the exam board have got to teach a broad range of topics, they're not just going to focus on the same topics on paper two and paper three that have appeared on paper one. They're going to choose maybe some of those topics, but then they're going to include lots of the other topics that haven't appeared yet. So for instance, if trigonometry or Pythagoras or the volume of a prism hasn't appeared on paper one, I would then say there's a good chance that they may appear on paper two and paper or paper two or paper three or even both of them. So the on-scene topic uh, papers and checklists, they're just a list of topics that haven't appeared yet that I would say there's a good chance that some of them will appear on paper two and paper three. And if I was revising, I would look at those and then I would go back and recap everything. They're not predictions as to what's coming up. They're just purely a list of topics that haven't been tested yet. And if they were, if I was revising, they would be the ones that I'd be thinking, well, if they haven't tested any of these important topics, there's a good chance some of them will appear. I'll do some work on those, spend a couple of hours going through those. And once that's done, then I'll have a look and do, you know, some work on all the other ones as well. Uh, but also remember, there's quite a lot of time between paper one and paper two. So you've got quite a bit of time to go through and look at the on-scene topic papers, the checklist, and then go back and look at everything also. Anyway, guys, I really hope this video has been useful. I wish you all the very, 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 very best of luck for your revision. And I hope the papers go extremely well. And I hope that you ace your GCSE maths. I hope you ace all your other subjects as well. I hope you have an amazing summer and all the very best of luck. Um, so remember, the on-scene topic papers will be coming out after paper one. I'll be on YouTube answering questions and comments and stuff as well. So if you've got any questions, feel free to put them on there. And yeah, so good luck.